Hi, welcome to the Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. My name is Kristen Jameson, and today I'm here with Annette Geller from the Green Wheel Food Hub to chat a little bit about how spending EBT dollars at the farmers markets can help support the local economy and our agriculture here in Hawaii. Welcome, Annette. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to talking with you. Yeah, so can you just start off by telling us a little bit about what you do at Green Wheel and why the organization exists? Sure. Um, Green Wheel Food Hub basically is um, working to provide support for sustainable local agriculture. And particularly, we like to focus on getting local fresh food to people who are in underserved areas and to people who are lower income so that they might not normally have this access. Uh, right now, our, primarily, our, our primary focus is on a couple of farmers markets where we support using SNAP, which is food stamps, and I'll get to that. Um, there, so there's two farmers markets where we're at. One is the Honolulu Farmers Market, Wednesday at the Blaisdell Center. Everybody just calls it the Blaisdell Market. Wednesdays from f 4 to 7 in front of the concert hall. And the other one is in Kalihi, um, the crop shop at uh, Kuhio Park that is sponsored by Kokua Kalihi Valley. So those at those two markets, we assist people to use their SNAP benefits to buy fresh local produce. So how or does, and not just yeah. produce, other, any eligible items. So how does that work? Is there a special card that people mm -hmm. use? Or? Yes. So first of all, SNAP, S-N-A-P, is Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Uh, it's the program formerly known as food stamps. <laughs> Um, it, officially, it's called SNAP, but a lot of people still call it food stamps. And uh, the, the SNAP benefits are on a debit card called a EBT card. A lot of people ask me, what's EBT? Electronic Benefits Transfer. And that includes SNAP benefits and also any cash benefits. Um, might include WIC, Women, Infants, and Children program. So uh, it's one card that acts like a debit card. So um, the EBT is a card and SNAP is a SNAP program. SNAP is one the of the programs that is on there. Mm -hmm. The balance is kept th th on that card. And so we just swipe that EBT card and people get as many green bucks as they ne feel they'll need. This is one green buck. Oh, it's not showing up very well. <laughs> um, but it, it's a token, basically, worth $1. So it's almost like whenever and you go to the fair and you get yes. um, your raffle tickets. Exactly. Or, well, not uh, raffle, not raffle, but your, um, it, well, yeah. Scrip. Scrip tickets. Yeah. So it's like Scrip. Uh, it's worth $1. And if they don't use it all, they can return it for a refund that goes right back into their card. So, you know, I have a lot of customers buy more than they think they'll need and they just return what they haven't used. So have you found that this has helped people get more um, access to local vegetables oh, using definitely. their EBT cards? Yeah, because it's good, as, again, as I said, not just vegetables, but any permitted foods, which would include breads, um, nothing that is meant to be eaten on the spot. But people can even buy, for example, uh, frozen meat, smoked meat to take home, or um, uh, the, at the Blaisdell Farmer's Market, there's a guy who sells fresh pasta and sauces. But one thing is that even the prepared foods at that market use as much local product as possible. But anyway, so any permitted food, they can use this um, dollar for dollar as if it were cash, they can't get change or make it. There's a few glitches uh, because it can't be broken. There's rules. But basically, it's pretty simple. Uh, most of the vendors ex accept it. The vendors who have any eligible items are very happy to accept it. And then at the end of the market, they give me back the green bucks that they've collected. And then the next week, I bring them a check. So um, it's, it's really great for the vendors. They get a check 
for their uh, whatever it is with without them having to hassle with being able to accept food stamps individually and go through the whole application process and you know whatever hassles are involved uh, they're they're very happy with it mm -hmm. but the our um, our customers are so thrilled they over and over people tell me how much better the produce is at the farmers market than it is at supermarkets and that makes sense most of the supermarket produce is imported so it's 10 days old when it arrives um, you, you know I've had people say why I can't believe how long my lettuce keeps or my greens the vegetables are keeping longer well they're fresher <laughs> Actually, um, I, you know, if you'd like, I brought along some lettuce that I bought yesterday. If you'd like to take a leaf or two yeah. and just crunch it. All I did was wash it. Oh, it's really can fresh. You hear, can you hear this? Mm-hmm. That's great. I don't yeah. know if pe uh, the, the audience <laughs> can hear that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. This is so crunchy. I use it like chips. Mm -hmm. And so you're saying that the quality that you get at the farmer's market is a lot better because the produce yeah. is being picked fresher. Um, mm -hmm. So you're getting it, you know, just a couple days after it was harvested right here. Actually, so that lettuce I bought last night was harvested yesterday. It, it, uh, the, uh, at other markets, it, it, an evening market, it might have been, it will have been uh, sorry, uh, harvested the same day, a morning market maybe the day before. And that freshness also confers, you know, more nutrition too that yes. you're having access to because the longer it sits there, the less nutritious the food becomes. Better flavor, yeah. which translates into I'm more likely to eat it. So yeah, um, definitely <coughs> the access to this. And the interesting thing is there's a reputation that farmers markets are expensive. In my experience, uh, prices are comparable to the supermarkets, if not cheaper. And as I say, there it's fresher for the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a, a benefit all around. There is no downside. Yeah, everybody wins. <laughs> everybody wins exactly. So, with this program, how how big is the buying power of EBT to give? Um, folks the ability to use their EBT um, SNAP dollars at the farmer's market? Well, total EBT for the state of Hawaii, and I am just giving a very rough number, about half a billion dollars a year. $500 million a year comes into the state through this federal program. Uh, only a very small of that, amount of that is currently going to the farmers markets. And of course, uh, people need a lot more than what they can buy at a farmer's market. We don't grow wheat here. We don't grow rice here. Uh, there's a lot we don't grow. Um, grains, even um, cheese. There's very little cheese here or so forth. But the, um, the vegetables and other fruits and e other products that are grown in Hawaii, and there is a, some meat and there are, there's eggs and there's things like that. Um, it would be lovely if a, even a small percentage of people more would come and buy at the farmer's market instead of the supermarket. Because that money, when you spend money at, whether it's food stamps or your own, you, you know, money that you've earned or inherited or whatever, uh, money spent at a farmer's market, the number I've seen generally, and again, I'm, uh, not sure exactly how this was calculated, but I've seen numerous times that a dollar spent at the farmer's market will generate about a dollar seventy, at least, in local economic benefit. So whenever people use their SNAP benefits at the farmer's markets, they're actually using federal dollars to help supplement the local Hawaii economy rather right. than spending it at a big box grocery store that's going to send a lot of big proceeds of that money back to, you know, their corporate pocketbook. Exactly. That's the, the big benefit to our economy. It also, where since local agriculture is so precarious, anything that goes to help the farmers remain sustainable and viable is something that benefits everybody in the state. 
So what are some of the benefits of shopping at a farmer's market? Well, well besides the fact that it's so much fresher and more delicious and keeps longer so that I don't waste it, uh, there's the, for me, there's the relationship. The first farmer's market that I was able to shop at is the KCC market on Saturday mornings, which is a bit more than, I think it's 14 years, a little over 14 years ago that it started. I've been shopping with the same farmers for 14 years. You develop a relationship, you know them. Okay, this is going to sound awfully hokey. <laughs> When I am eating something that, whether it's just a piece of lettuce or tomato or something that I have cooked, I love to cook, so something that I have cooked using those local ingredients, I'm very aware of the who grew it and the hard work that they put in so that I could enjoy this beautiful food. I feel very grateful and that makes the food much more delicious. That feeling that I have that somebody has worked hard so that I may enjoy this food, that means a lot to me personally. And not everybody's going to feel that way, but I hope some people may think about it at least. It's the, not something you get at the grocery store always. Oh, heavens no. <laughs> <laughs> heavens no. Um, so, yeah, uh, that relationship that I've developed. Plus, if I have a question, I could ask them. Um, I encourage people to please wait until the farmer isn't busy or the vendor. If it may not be a, a, a farm stand, it might be a baker, whatever. Wait till they can answer your questions. But then they're usually happy to chat with people and to answer questions and to explain what something is. And it's not just the farmers, um, the, the customers too. Customers at, at farmers markets tend to be a friendly bunch. <laughs> um, that's you know, where we that's, went actually, yeah. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, you, yesterday you came over to our table and we started talking and the next thing, here I am on your show. <laughs> and right across the aisle way was the purveyor of lettuce and asparagus that were yes, eating. So exactly. Full circle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you, you know, when, when I'm doing my shopping there, or I still shop at KCC on Saturdays, uh, very often I get into conversations with people, other people, other customers. Um, what happens is, like, I'll be picking up broccoli rob, and somebody local has never seen broccoli rob, so they say, oh, what is that? And then, how do you use it? And I explain it, and they say, oh, I'll try it. And they try it. And the same thing goes, I may ask somebody, how do you use this Asian vegetable that I've never seen before? And I wind up liking it. <laughs> So people aren't getting just vegetables at the farmer's market, they're also getting recipes and yes. new experiences and new friends. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the benefits, are, there, there's so many benefits and no downside <laughs> to shopping at a farmer's market. Uh, well, the one thing is, look, again, Blaisdell uh, is where I do the green wheel, but um, at KCC, I've been shopping there for 14 years. I, about 12 years ago, I stopped buying any vegetables and fruits outside of the farmer's markets with rare, occasionally, I may occasionally buy an apple, <laughs> but basically the one thing that I buy that I cannot buy locally grown, I can't cook without garlic. And nobody's growing garlic, they've tried, but garlic just doesn't grow well here. So I buy garlic. Otherwise, produce is from the farmer's market. How did you make that choice to, you know, for the last 14 years to pretty much shop exclusively at farmer's markets for your produce? Uh, partly because of the higher quality. Mm -hmm. Why should I buy uh, something that is going to rot in two days? Um, and, but also, it's really um, the, and the relationships that I've developed with the vendors and also my desire to support local agriculture. As I said, there's no downside to it. It's all positive. I, I've actually, one, one vegetable that I love is, my mother was French, 
So I grew up eating asparagus and artichokes. And no, but no artichokes here. And I have literally stood in a market looking at artichokes and I look and the stem is kind of brown. And I just say, you're so long from the farm and I put it back. Wow, yeah. Well, thank you so much for um, sharing all this information that you have about your experience at Farmer's Market. My We're going to take a quick um, two-minute break. Sure. And then we'll be back to talk a little bit more about Farmer's Market after a couple messages. Aloha. My name is John Waihiti. <laughs> and I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to Talk Story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Wahee. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Welcome back to the Hawaii Food and Farmers series. I'm here with Nanette Geller talking about farmers markets and the local EBT program with Green Wheel Hawaii. Thanks. Welcome back, Nanette. Thank you. So right um, before it, the, it's Green Wheel Food Hub. Green Wheel Food Hub, yeah. yeah. So um, right before the break, we were chatting about some of the things that you can and can't find at a local mm -hmm. farmer's market. So what are some of the things that are really tough to find locally? Well, as I said, the one thing that I must have is garlic. Um, I ha then there's like stone fruits, peaches, plums, apricots. But even if I, can, if I buy them at a supermarket, they're not nearly as good as I remember eating when they were fresh from when I was a kid. So I don't miss them. Um, honestly, why would I care about peaches when I can eat mangoes in, when they're in season? I live for mango season. Um, I occasionally buy an apple, occasionally. But uh, really, there isn't that much that I feel, oh, I want that, and I can't find it. Um, I usually manage. It's not about what I can't find. It's what I can find. And part of it is, how do you shop? How do you cook? I look to see, and I've done this all, all my life, um, not just because of the farmer's markets. I look to see what's there, and I buy, say, how will I use this, which I can buy, rather than saying, oh, I want to make artichokes, and I can't find artichokes, darn. So in the kitchen, rather than building your grocery list around a recipe, you're building your recipes around what you can find at the farmer's market. Exactly. Yeah, it kind of reverses almost the way that a lot of people cook. That's true, and it doesn't take long to change that mindset, especially when the results are so delicious. And you know, when ingredients are this fresh and delicious, it's so much easier to cook. I don't have to do very much to them to have a, a feast. What are some of your favorite local ingredients to cook with? Well, actually, the aspar because I've loved asparagus all my life, so I buy it very often. When they're skinny spears, I toss them with olive oil and roast them at high temperature for about 10 minutes. And then I can just serve them on a plate. I can serve them with a poached egg on top. I could make a pasta. I could make a salad. I could put them in sandwiches, <laughs> all kinds of what things. Or I might, this is a kind of a fat spear. I could use it in a stir fry. I could steam it. Um, what I'm actually going to do tonight is kind of interesting. I'm going to make a pizza, shave this with a uh, vegetable peeler and in very thin shavings and pile it on top of some the cheese on it, the pizza crust, cook it. And when it's almost ready, I'm going to add a couple of local eggs and put it back so that the eggs are really still runny. <laughs> and that's going to be dinner tonight. And that was all inspired by the asparagus that you picked up uh, at the farmer's yes, market yeah. yesterday. When they're fat like this, I sometimes do that. And when they're skinny, I do something completely different. So uh, yes, I buy asparagus actually very often. But what, what I'm going to do with it depends on what kind of asparagus I find. But uh, all of this, um, a lot of it is seasonal. So um, right now, I, we're buying um, a lot of 
oranges and tangerines because the citrus is in season, so we're eating that every day. You don't have to do anything with a, a local orange other than cut it and put it on a plate. <laughs> When you're talking about the oranges and how, you know, you can't get stone fruits in Hawaii, I like how you didn't frame it as, oh, I have to sacrifice, you know, peaches because I eat local, but rather, oh, look at the abundance of other types of fruits that mm -hmm. I have access to. Yeah. Uh, rejoice in what you have. Yeah. And life is so much more pleasant. <laughs> and so one of the things, you know, that you said we don't have, um, that it's hard to, you know, sacrifice and give up is garlic. That is one thing I really... I, I, my mother was French. I can't cook without garlic. Come on. So that's one thing I buy. But it for, th th this brings us to uh, something. There are a lot of so-called farmers markets that a lot of the stuff is imported. Um, sometimes most of it. And you can. One thing I do when I go to a new farmers market, a place I haven't been, I look around. If I see garlic. I know that they permit imported stuff. And I don't blame the vendors. If it's permitted, I don't care. But don't call yourself a farmer's market if it's wholesalers selling their off-grade produce or overstocks, or even if it's first-grade stuff, but imported. That's a great pro tip. You know, if you're at a farmer's market Look and for you garlic. see garlic, you know that not everything on the table is local. Yeah, and some of it may be, yeah. but you have to ask. Yeah. And I've found, with very rare exceptions, I think that people will be honest and tell you, if you say, is this, did you grow this, or is this from Hawaii, they will be honest. Uh, but you have to know to ask. So what questions should people be asking when they're at the farmer's market? Well, as I said, the first question is, if it's a market you haven't been to before. Now, I know at the Blaisdell Market, um, and Casey, the, there is a very strict rule. All produce has to be from the state of Hawaii. And that's not the case at all the farmer's markets. Right. It's, it, it's the case at the Blaisdell or actually uh, and some of, there are other markets where I know that is true. Uh, the KCC market, it's true. Actually, all of the markets that are run by the Farm Bureau, they do have a strict rule about that. It's got to be from Hawaii. They won't allow, which is why you won't find garlic. Uh, there are other farmers markets, excellent, well run, and very strict about only local produce. But many, when you're right here near Fort Street Mall, uh, you'll see plenty of garlic down there. <laughs> it's not local. So I, I would say the first thing you do is look and see if you see garlic. If you don't see garlic, ask, what are, is the policy on produce that is not from Hawaii? And again, I have never had anyone lie to me as far as I know. Uh, they will usually be happy to tell you what is local and what isn't if, it's not, if it isn't all local. Um, so I try to I try to support markets that are 100% local. That's my own preference. But if I have to fill in with a, from a market like Fort Street Mall or Manoa or something, where they have imported stuff, at least I can check to see what's local. Rather than asking, you know, what is and isn't local, are there any other questions you like to ask farmers? About? I do. I actually, um, and again, this is personal. I will ask about their growing practices. Uh, for example, obviously, if somebody is certified organic, that has a lot of meaning. Uh, there's also a, there are some farmers who do what's called Korean natural farming, but many farmers are following um, a really good practice. Uh, they many of them are no spray, or if they use any um, fungicides or sprays, they're using the same ones that an organic farmer would use. So I would rather. You know, I do ask about those practices, and if it's something that matters to you, uh, you can ask and make a decision on whether it's okay with you. Um, th those, those are the main things I ask. Oh, of course, I say, where is your farm? And what else do you grow? And what other markets do you participate in? So I, I may ask. So if anybody's interested in being part of the Green Wheel Food Hub program, you know, to have access to buy local produce with their SNAP dollars, how uh, can they get okay. started? Well, okay. If they already have SNAP, 
they just come to my table at the Blaisdell and I will assist them. So they, they, the individual farmers do not accept their EBT card. They just come to me, get as many green bucks as they think they're going to need, and I will give them, I'll tell them what they can buy. I have a paper that lists the vendors who accept it and what types of items they're allowed to buy. So it's really easy. Um, but if somebody does not yet have EBT and they think, gosh, I might qualify on low income and God, I could really use some extra money to pay for food, um, then the, may, may I, uh, the, this is the uh, brochure, Helping Hands Hawaii. Helping Hands Hawaii. And if you can have the phone number there, um, but, or just call Helping Hands Hawaii. They screen for eligibility and then um, help with the process. Great, well hopefully um, after today some more folks might be coming down to Bladesdale to I hope so. To use their EBT dollars at um, the farmer's market through the Green Mill Food Hub. And thanks so much for sharing you know, your 14 years of expertise on farmer's markets here in Hawaii. My pleasure, and thank you very much for having me. This has been the Hawaii Food and Farmer Series with Nanette Geller talking about the Green Wheel Food Hub here in Hawaii. Thanks so much. Okay, would you like to take these home? You're I'd love to. to. <laughs> thank you. It was fantastic. It was great. Yeah. It. Here's the bags. They were good. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, um, Annette. Was... By the way, this is good raw, too. I, you know, it's, people don't realize you can eat asparagus. Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> In fact, um, it, it, you know, people make a salad of shaved mm -hmm. asparagus. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the thick ones are perfect for that. Great. So here, I kind of nibbled at this yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs>